Hi everyone, it's Hillary from The Nine of Hair, and today I have another art challenge for you. So today's art challenge, we're going to be doing something kind of different um, that I sometimes like to do, and we're going to be doing a very, very, very tiny still life. So if you don't know, still life is a big old art tradition that uses um, objects, a lot of times flowers, fruit, ceramics, just kind of often, very often sort of household objects to create these sort of pictures that look as if these objects were just sort of carelessly and casually and beautifully placed to create this just picture of life that is still. Um, and, and very often these are, you know, again like I said, flowers, food, um, dishes, bottles, that kind of thing. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do uh, using very, very tiny, tiny objects, which I think is really fun because it forces you to sort of uh, look really carefully at small details and also you don't need a lot of space for it and you can kind of use a lot of things that you find around home. So what we're going to need for today's challenge is um, some tiny objects. So I've got a bunch of like, I've got a little glass bottle, I've got a marble, I've got a little tiny ceramic snake and some other stuff that I'll show you in a minute. I've got a piece of fabric. Uh, we're going to need something to draw on. So I've got this just sketch pad here with me. Um, I've got a pencil, I've got a sharpie, I've got a pencil sharpener, and eraser. I've got some pastels here because that's what I have at my house. And I also am going to have a lantern. If you don't have something like this, or some kind of a light bulb, or a candle, or any kind of small light source, it doesn't matter. But you can really use anything. You can use a lamp, you can use a flashlight. Um, this is just to add a little bit of extra um, pizzazz to your drawing. So I'm going to be using this little camping lantern. And then, um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, so we'll get started, and the first thing we're going to do is select our items and kind of set up our still life, which is maybe the trickiest part of this whole thing. Um, composition is a really, really complex activity, actually, because you really have to think about, you know, what's going to look good together, and colors, and the, the layout, and sort of the overall flow of the image. So we're going to kind of set a little still life up together, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. All right, so I've got my workspace organized, and I'm going to set my little still life up. So I'm going to use this sort of second sketchbook that I have to create just a little, um, backdrop for it so that it's not uh, that it's not I'm not seeing the sewing machine and stuff in behind there but I just kind of have something simple to look at and I think I'll put this little piece of red velvet just under the corner here and I'm going to use this corner here to do my drawing now I'm going to start arranging my objects like I said I've got a variety of little things um, and one of the things that I kind of think about when I'm setting up my still life is sort of trying to create a variety of textures and shapes and um, if you think about just kind of like the outline of the general image to so make sure it looks interesting um, and also the placement of things so I've got this little plastic cat and I've got this marble and if I do something like this this is kind of a weird image because um, you know or you know I put something like this back here everything is placed kind of equidistant apart like the same distance apart and it sort of looks odd it looks like what we want this to look like is sort of, if you think about, um, more like a casual picnic and less like a formal place setting. So I want to have these things kind of look like they just sort of happened to be there, which is a tricky thing to do. Um, I am not crazy about the fact that all of these things are kind of light objects, so I'd really like to add something in there that makes it kind of, that sort of breaks up the, the colors. So I'm going to put in these little leaves. That's starting to look better. Um, I think I may move the cat so that it's kind of in front. I like how now you can kind of see the cat, like you sort of look at the cat and then you're, you travel up the tail and then up the leaf and it kind of gives you sort of this little circular way of looking at this. And I might move this little marble, I don't know, kind of over there somewhere. And then that's looking pretty good. I might add one more thing. I have this little ceramic snake 
And I also have this button. And I think I'm going to use... You know what, maybe I'll use the snake. I was using the button before, but I'm going to try the snake. Um, now I have sort of three sort of shiny objects. The snake is a little bit shiny, the marble is shiny, the glass is shiny, and then I have the cat and the leaf, which are not. And then I'm pretty much ready to start drawing. I'm going to put my little light on, see how that looks. You now you see everything's just a little bit more dramatic. Um, and then that way that'll kind of create some interesting shadows and stuff for me, which will be fun. So we're going to start drawing. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to go. And before I start, I'm just going to show you a little trick that I do sometimes um, that's going to kind of help. Because these objects are so small, I want to have something that's going to sort of help me um, to sort of frame them on my picture. Uh, because it's really easy to, uh, if you move your head, you're going to totally change the perspective on this whole thing. And it's really good to kind of hold still. So there's a couple little tricks that I use, and I'll show you those. One is I like to make a little viewfinder, which if you watched Amanda's viewfinder art challenge, then you'll kind of have a basic idea about how to do this. We're going to be creating just a really boring little square, um, and it's very, very fast. All you need is a little square of uh, some kind of paper, and you're going to fold it in half, and then you're going to take your scissors and just cut a little square out of the center. And then you can unfold it and you've got a little viewfinder. So you can use that to kind of help you see your image and just kind of, if you hold your hand still in one place, probably your, non, your non-dominant hand, then you can kind of see how it almost looks like the picture is inside a little frame, which is really going to help you figure out where, where everything goes on the paper. Um, the other thing that I sometimes do, which is nice, is to take a photo of it with a little camera. If you have a phone that you can do that with, it's really handy. So I'm just going to go ahead and snap a little picture here, line this up. And this is almost another way to have a viewfinder, except that then you've got this little reference that you can use that you don't have to keep sort of holding still to look at. So I can actually have this picture up now also if I want to. And that can help me as well. Whoops, I just moved my whole thing. Okay, so I've got my picture, I've got my viewfinder, and I'm ready to go. I am going to do... I'm just going to play around. There's lots of different things you can do with this. I want to do just a really fast little drawing based on this image. And I'm going to try to get all of the different elements in there. So I like to sort of sketch out my basic outline of my shape. And then... I'm going to start with the big stuff first, so kind of like the, the corner of that little room I've created, and then sort of the basic outlines of everything, and then once I've got that all sketched in, I'm going to put in the details. And I'm going to try to do this really quickly, just so I can kind of get warmed up here. There's the background. I'm just being really loose and kind of messy with this. There's like sort of the bottle, there's kind of where the leaves go, they kind of go up to the top there, I can see. And then the cat's tail comes down here. This is the kind of the cat's head. The paws come down here. They're pretty close to the bottom of my viewfinder, I can see. And then there's a snake, sort of down in this corner. This is basically a circle. And then the marble is here. And that's sort of how this composition looks. When I look at it at the, at the page, it looks kind of weird, but we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, so now I can put my viewfinder down that I've got everything sketched out and I can start working. Okay, so I've got my image all sketched out. I'll show you what I've got here. So I've got the main details put in. I've got the cat, I've got the plant, I've got the marble, I've got the snake. And I think at this point I'm going to add some color. I think I'll do some color on this one. Um, I'm going to use my pastels and I'm going to color it. Woo! Well, they're all on the floor. <laughs> okay, well I'm going to just use my pastels from off the floor. And I'm going to color it. And I'm going to, I kind of like the colors that are in this, and I'm going to try to kind of capture all the things that are going on here. So 
yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. Um, I've got my interesting lighting, that's going to really help. And I can really think about sort of adding those little shadows that are in there and a lot of the little highlights that are happening. So let's get started. Okay, I worked on it a bit. You can kind of see it's coming along here. I'm adding just a few more shadows in, and then I think it's going to be kind of done. It's exciting. And I like to use um, sort of brighter colors than just like gray when I'm doing shadows and stuff because um, they're never really just black, you know, especially depending on the color that the light is. My light is sort of blue, so technically my shadow should be kind of like a weird brown color or like a like the opposite of blue, like orangey. But I don't. I just want to make the shadows look like shadows. I'm just going to finish here by adding a tiny bit of red kind of on this far wall. That's sort of reflecting up off the, the still life. Kind of, maybe I'll put a little bit of that brown in, in there to kind of show where the shadows are of this plant. And then I'm done. Alright, so this is what I've done. Um, I've got all my details in there. I didn't like put the cat's face in or anything, but I've got the basic details. And I'll just show you a couple other little experiments that I did that when I was playing around with this. Um, I did this little black and white drawing as well. Um, if you want to do this black and white thing, this is a really fun way to kind of show all of the values that are in your, your picture, especially when you put that light on it. And a little trick that I use for that is I take that photograph that I took on my phone and I make it look, I make it black and white. Because you can usually do that with a really simple sort of photo editors that come on phones. And that's a really great way to kind of see what the values are. Um, and I'll show you that picture that I took. And then the other experiment that I did was another sort of pen and ink and um, pastel drawing. It's a little bit different than the one that I just did. You can kind of see how they're a little slightly bit different, different compositions. I used a button in this one. Um, yeah, different colors fun to kind of play around with. So now I have all these neat little drawings and I'm really excited to see what you guys all come up with. Um, please send us your images and hopefully we'll see you all soon for another art challenge. Bye!